Hello, everyone, and welcome. This is the VML, the Venus and Mercury League. If you haven't heard of us before, welcome. Um, we are a league uh, that puts the spotlight on marginalized genders within the Magic community, 64 players total. We split the players up into eight, actually, because of Strixhaven, it's eight schools, not divisions, it's schools this season. Play is done in a round robin for seven weeks. We cut to a playoff top 24. And at the end of the season, we will have one standing and we'll be sending the, our champion to the next large championship event that Wizards decides to hold. So thank you very we much for that. Yes. <laughs> to be determined. It's kind of a kind of a you know a silent subject right now, but uh yeah. wherever whatever it is, they will be going there. <laughs> so but really big thank you to Wizards for their support this season and a big thank you to the NRG series uh for making this season possible and to Channel Fireball for their prize support this season. This is week number four and uh we're starting to get in there. We're starting to get in there because we can still, you can make the playoffs at X3. We have had X3s make the playoffs in the past. So even if they're 0 3 right now, every player in this tournament has a chance to take it all down still. But before we get too much into that, I would like to introduce my exquisite co host tonight, the lovely Miss Talia Vest. How are you doing tonight? <laughs> I'm doing well. Thank you so much for having me. I'm very excited to see these matches go down. This is a big week uh, with with just what you just said uh, if you're if you're oh and three there is still an opportunity to make it to the end so this is a big week uh good luck to all the players i'm very excited to be here and to see these games play out yes and why don't you uh introduce yourself to chat uh tell us a little bit about yourself tell us about what you do uh we'd love to know a little more about you oh. Okay. Uh, <laughs> hi, y'all. I am Talia Vess, and I stream Magic the Gathering. I play a little bit of everything. I have to admit, I haven't been playing much standard lately. Um, I just feel like Strixhaven didn't really shake it up too much. Like, we're kind of seeing the same with Rogues. So I've been playing a little bit more historic lately, uh, loving that. And then I also play a lot of EDH, and I play limited. I kind of play a little bit of it all because uh, I like variety in my life but yeah I love it I love you can it. find and me I there on Twitch <laughs> <laughs> yes make sure you follow Talia and and follow us here at Aspirin CCG and make sure you follow our Twitter VML MTG so uh let's 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 just jump right in here we'll take a look besides that um uh we have a huge prize pool Besides that invite that's going on, we have a $3,000 prize pool this season. Uh, first place, the future. See, they put a lot more succinctly. It was a much better put an invite to a Magic esports event during the 2021-2022 season. Wow, the editors were quick on I, that. He, that was <laughs> <laughs> and uh, a one-year one -year subscription to Channel Fireball Pro. So big thanks to them for that. Uh, all of top eight gets an invite to the Magic Arena Qualifier Weekend during the 2021-2022 season. So skip the ladder. Who doesn't love skipping the ladder? As well as a one-month subscription to CFU Pro. Oh my gosh, I misspoke. We have a $3,500 prize pool. We got to up that prize pool. $3,500. So if you are in top 16, wow. you're getting paid so pretty great thank you very much to all of our sponsors we love aspirant channel fireball energy series uh wizards y'all are great big ups to them uh supporting the vml here so why don't we get into it let's check out that metagame for this week you were saying about yeah. rogues and uh i see I rogues. Like it's very similar <laughs> you know we're seeing a lot of you know the the ultimatum you know i love seeing naya adventurers here because that is one of my personal favorite decks so hopefully we get to watch one of those matchups we'll see uh but we're seeing let's see rakdos aristocrats and it looks like we're seeing some aggro decks as well uh that's gonna be the gruel aggro and ooh, like a, is it tempo do we call it is it anymore or do we have to say the new term I is Mari? Somebody their deck. <laughs> is like, like, what do we call it? <laughs> they, were, they were calling it Prismizit, and I'm like, oh. <laughs> I guess we'll just it, too. <laughs> it, kinda, it actually works. 
you know, but it, it's definitely Naya Adventure has been climbing the ladder, like you said. We have, you, I you know, know, I uh, love seeing that. But a fall for you, Grace for our are you surprised at all to see Rogue still on top after you know the new set, Strixhaven? I mean, I, I, I suppose that I'm actually surprised it wasn't more popular in the earlier weeks because it was such a powerful deck already. Not much has changed, you know, you see a, a baleful mastery here or there, you know, but. For yeah, the part, right. The deck really didn't change. Didn't change much, exactly. That, that could be said for a lot of our decks. Um, uh, uh, we saw mono red dominating the first three weeks of the VML. We saw it go from the most played deck week one to the most played deck week yeah. two to the second most played deck in week three, and now it it's at the bottom. So low, it's in like our little other grouping there in the parentheses. Yeah, so. I was actually just looking at that because I was watching a little bit of last week's, and Mono Red was up there. And now, now is, is that four Mono Red decks? Four Mono Red decks. So it just, just okay, it, it just missed, but it missed. Wow. You know, so that's a uh, you know, it's definitely like I said, a, a bit of a fall from grace, a little bit of a surprise, but um, the one, the one lonesome Boros Winota. Yes. <laughs> and cycling cycling is also holding on but one oh, time wow, so yeah. cycling so more power to them <laughs> yeah that's interesting because just a few weeks ago cycling was actually one of the big contenders so uh but we're we only, we're only seeing one of those now but it changes so quickly um i mean that's something to love about standard and this looks like a very healthy place for standard because we have such a wide range of different archetypes oh I, so. I i do love it it's it's this very nice even spread this is not like the the omnath or euro uh, oh, no. Days. Oh, no. <laughs> no 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 i had to bring it up <laughs> i i'm loving i these, miss it <laughs> these prismizit dragons and things like that and speaking of prismari let's take a look at our college clash lineup and how they are doing Oh, okay. So, so we have two colleges holding on with three and O's across the board, Prismari and Quandrix. I mean, I suppose like that's kind of like on theme there. Quandrix would not take anything less than a 3-0 from their students. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> you know, and I feel like Prismari sort of overachieves as well. So oh, we see uh, Sky. Uh, Samantha Murphy and Rebecca Black, all rep and Quandrix. Uh, Rebecca Black, we will be able to watch them later. Prismari, we have a Blazin on the top there, who we also will be watching later, as well as Rose and Annalise, all holding on to 3 0. In Lorehold, uh, the top of the Lorehold is our season four champion, Hog Pog. They are at 3 0. And uh, I see Lady of the Crease there at 2 and 1. Ah. <laughs> <You know. laughs> and fellow VML caster, Ellie of the Veil, vale, holding on at 2 1 as well. Silver Quill. We've got nice. two 3 0s, Shadow Cloak 3 0. Hayu, also a VML caster here. So the VML caster is holding it down pretty well at 3 and 0 oh in Silver Quill. Love Brady to see that. Also at 2 1. Gotta love it. Uh, Wither Bloom, we've got Annabellius there at the top 3 0. Oh, and Ruby Palenka, who we also, be, and Bronca, both at 2 1. Both of them we will also be seeing later on this evening. So pretty great. Pretty great. I'm ready to get into some action here, though. I'm ready to yeah, get like, the week let's four do it. on the road. <laughs> let's do it. So our First matchup is going to be Hallie, uh, who is playing Luris Rogues. And, I mean, this just looks like a pretty standard Luris Rogues deck. Is there anything? She's going to be playing up against what I believe is the Teamer Adventures deck. So uh, do you think that there's going to be any advantage or disadvantage to this Rogues deck? I mean, the Teamer Adventures deck has a really, really good sideboard with those like exile creature cards, the Colothes, the Oxes. Yeah, I think that this, um, I actually, the Teamer Adventures with the four main deck counter spells, two Mystical Disputes, two Sought Cummings, can definitely pose a few more problems for the Rogues player. I think it depends on how mm -hmm. quickly the Rogues player can get onto the board and start taking control of the game. I feel like if they stumble, Teamer Adventures will run them over. So, um, yeah, I, I agree. I, and this Teamer Adventures list having the Brazen Borrower and that Stomp, 
uh, definitely can control the game a little bit too. Um, and it looks like there is mystical dispute saw it coming and extra turns with the epiphany, which yes. would be really gross. Uh, <laughs> Obosh as the companion making everything uh, pretty much cost a double if it's an odd converted mana cost. So, wow, this will be interesting to see how this one plays out. Yes, it definitely will. If Michaela is able to stick any of her expensive threats here, like Goldspan Dragon, like you said, or the All Runs Epiphany or a Great Henge, we could see this, this game uh, turn quickly. We'll see how quickly Holly can get on to the battlefield and take these games over. So let's head in. Let's go into our first match of the evening. We've got Myth and Michaela on Team Road Adventures against Holly MTG, who is on robes. We will be watching from Holly's side here. So let's get into game number one. What do we see here? <laughs> All right, I see two intertap lands, which doesn't feel great, but lots of really good creatures with the thieves and the drown on the lock as well. So in Academy's Awakening, you can, uh, pay the three life so starting out with two mana is not bad yes if i'm on hallie's side too i'm kind of relieved that wasn't a forest edge walling keeper go so oh yeah no turn one play from michaela's side either yes yes now michaela oh there's the innkeeper <laughs> <laughs> there it is eddie heard me <laughs> uh -huh. Got to go ahead and drop down that Triome Intertapped. Uh, yeah, so turn three play here for Michaela. What are we looking for? Maybe a Mammoth or something? Maybe just holding up a Saw it Coming. I'm not too sure. Oh. Well. Foretelling? Michaela, having all Foretelling of the colors. Foretelling? Yeah. <laughs> nice. And... With two foretell cards in in this deck, in the main deck, there are two sort comings and four all runs epiphany. So, so it could be the epiphany. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> the uh, epiphany. When do you ideally want to cast that? Like as soon as you can. <laughs> I mean, right now Hallie's hand is pretty loaded. Um, we saw. Tap land, tap land into um, island here. Like, Hallie just has an embarrassment of riches. I don't think that there is actually going to be a point in the game where Michaela is going to be able to safely cast. I know. That. That's what I was. Yeah, that's exactly what I was thinking. And I uh, saw it coming here on the Thieves Guild Enforcer. But this one will be fought over with the mystical dispute. So, with no other. And oh, oh, oh. We always see. oh my goodness, Whoa. this is a very important thief skills enforcer. <laughs> but if you look at Hallie's hand, Hallie could afford to fight over that with double drown on the lock True. and an, of one mind to right. uh, replenish the hand later on. Could even just cast the of one mind, you know, as a you know, just a three mana, you know, just a divination. So not the yeah. worst fight, honestly, on Hallie's side. Not expending too many resources. Um, this attack here, now we know that Mythic Kayla is not holding on to Goldspan Dragon. The okay. Fabled Passage was not cracked. So that's a good thing for Hallie. Ooh, and I see another Fortold card here. But we have two Drown the Locks, so... <laughs> on this side of the board so i mean ooh, and a heartless act very good up against uh michaela's deck for sure yes and see no big worries over that uh the thieves guild enforce that that was countered earlier on we're adding luris to our hand um Hallie having the option of holding on to Academe's Awakening as a spell maybe later on in the game, but seeing it as more advantageous to play as a land, since like we said, her hand's just totally full of gas here. Uh, you know, three oh yeah. I, I, I guess it's three removal spells. Like I want to call them counter removals, you know, whatever you'd want to call them. So Brazen Borrower is going to get countered. 
I like this play. <laughs> <laughs> I don't like that brazen borrower hanging around. No, uh, with with no real way to um, deal with a, I mean, a flyer letting it resolve and just drown yeah. in the locket after it resolves or your heartless act once it resolves. Yeah. I like saving Heartless Act for something bigger. Well, and there's the All Runs Epiphany. After choosing to fight over that brazen borrower, shields are down on Hallie's side. So All Runs Epiphany creates those two little pesky birds. So we've got and an extra Edgewell. turn. I'll tell you, Edgewell Innkeeper has some stay in this game. Edgewell Innkeeper's done like it's six the or MVP. seven damage. <laughs> And it's, you get in. It, it is like usually the MVP. Just drawing cards is so beneficial in any game of Magic. So, oh gosh. All right, that's into the hand. story. Ooh. Uh, so into the story draws four cards. Um, but I don't even know if you need to at this point. I think you just possibly drop down Loris. Hold, I can't see how much mana Hallie has up. Oh, four. Maybe they have. Oh, they okay. So they only have four. So they well, that's a little have... tough spot because you ideally are trying to probably hold up Drown in the Lock, but oh no, I'm sorry, it's five. Oh, I it thought so. I, I think oh, one's okay. hiding there. I think one's My hiding. Apologies, it is. Hiding. <laughs> <laughs> it's. But keeping up the Heartless Act, keeping the Thieves Guild Enforcer to block it back, just in case something goes wrong here. Because like you said, with a couple of draw fours in your hand and a Loris to recur anything that goes to the mm -hmm. graveyard anyway, Michaela won't even dare to get in with the Edgewell Innkeepers and is holding Obosh at this moment. So a land will be played on Michaela's side, but it doesn't look like... Michaela is willing to risk playing the Obosh into so much open mana, which is a, a smart Very, play. very smart, yes. Heads oh, another play. Drown in the Lock. These little flyers are kind of pesky, though. <laughs> they definitely are. <laughs> but you hate using removal on just like a 1-1 one, one flyer, but we'll see. Right. And, and I mean, this rogue, deck's, this rogue deck has plenty of flyers of their own with the Soaring Thought Thief. We just haven't uh, Haley hasn't drawn that really important card for this deck. Yes. But with Into the Story, we probably could. We'll see Thieves Guild Enforcer get into the red zone there. So Mythic Michaela at 14 life. Hallie at a, a bit lower at 8 life here with the two flyers. Definitely can be a little... Yeah, just pinging scary. every single turn. <laughs> mm-hmm. Loris does but... need life. Oh yeah, that's true. But is it is it worth getting attacking with another heartless act? So just totally wow. flush card draw and removal and whatever Holly could want, as long as they would have enough lands to play. Oh, where, where I like this in? attack. I like Ooh. this attack here. Getting in some damage, gaining some life, taking Mythic Michaela down to five, holding up all of that removal and counter magic. This is looking really good on Hallie's side. Yes. Even so with that epiphany and Obosh, like Obosh just can't hit the battlefield. No, I'm Mythic Michaela knows that and was trying to yeah. find a spot for it. Unfortunately, yeah. I don't know that she's going to be able to find a spot for it. We'll see a brazen no. borrower. Just the, the and I think this just gets countered. Yeah. Yeah. So can't have another flyer on the on the board. Yes. No, ma'am, to brazen borrower, but still will draw two cards. Still off drawing the cards. Well. Yeah. Unfortunately, it's six mana open now on Mythic Michaela's side. Um, if she chooses to fetch. I believe we have two mana on the, open on the side of Hallie. Two. Three? Three. May I think three, maybe. I think three. <laughs> it's hard to say. <laughs> but we only need two over here. Yeah, what do we, we don't need more than two. Who needs yeah. mana? <laughs> <laughs> this is certainly a big think, turn. Yeah, I think 
being at five, then thinking Michaela is like probably just going to hold back. Can't really afford to attack here. Yes, uh, I, I, agree. Then, I agree. Priced in. Now, would there be any reason over, uh, I guess, Heartless Act versus Drown in the Lock on that? Obosh? Uh, yeah, I, in fact, like, and especially with Hallie waiting until cracking the Fable Passage, maybe Ooh. being afraid of another mystical dispute, but still. That actually that worked out scary. perfectly. Yes, it did. <laughs> <laughs> that worked out perfectly. I mean, negated, negated that damage and... Bone Crusher hit the graveyard, so yes. it was a really, really good play. This is a, a big attack uh, with Michaela at five life. Hallie is coming across for lethal, so some chump blocks are going to need to be made here. Uh, yeah. So question of what what they want to say and what they want to go. It looks like Michaela wants to kill the Lurus and is in response going to save the Lurus. I love that. I like it. So, unfortunately, that empties out Michaela's that, side there. Yeah. And at 12 life and reloading on all of these spells, drawing an untapped black source and able to play yeah. the Thieves Guild Enforcer. So having a blocker back as well, not even a gold span dragon could take this game nope. over. Yep. We'll have to go to a game too. So in this sideboard plan uh we know that on Michaela's side we're probably going to be seeing the crush and scorch and even maybe Colothes and the ox but on Hallie's side um let's see what is happening over here crippling fear crippling fear that that you choose a creature type creatures aren't the chosen did they minus three minus three till end of turn so they pick like rogues and kills anything that's that's tiny on the other side it kills bone crusher giant and things like that it won't kill the dragon oh i, and I see kill... she was just moving so fast i didn't see oh, that oh yeah she it's added just... the crippling fear i thought it was like in the main board i was like she oh, was just that like the main give board? me that <laughs> but yeah okay so uh, some number of them i so... can see she's, she's bringing in two of the three copies here um, and bringing in uh, perhaps some number of cling to dust. Don't know. I don't see the cling to dust coming in yet, which is surprising with Mich Mythic Michaela having three copies of Ox of the Gramas. Uh, the crippling but... fear over on the other side. Like, what? What is that exactly hitting though? Like, oh, uh, it's like it's it's mostly for like Edgewell Innkeeper, uh, Bone Crusher. Gotcha, giant. gotcha, it's a, gotcha. It's it's. I think Bone Crusher Giant is like your biggest concern because okay. of the damage you have to take to target it. It just it's a clean way to answer it. Um and maybe even like the birds. The birds it would answer possibly brazen okay. power, uh the the mammoth, Kazandu mammoth. So pretty much anything except for Lovestruck Beast itself and, and Goldstone. The dragon. dragon. It hits but okay. It will kill any one ones that have come any That's princesses great... came with the love struck beast, so it might make it more difficult for love struck beast to attack as well. Oh, and it will hit the love struck beast token. So yes. yeah, there we go. All right, so soaring thought thief in Haley's hand. Uh, this is a big card for for this deck. Um, it's looking good. I would imagine that maybe make. Mythic Michaela is holding on to a stomp or I'm oh, going to play another 1-1. One, one. Beast token. We're going to let this resolve. Never have enough princess tokens. <laughs> yeah, just for safety. Just for safety. Have to. Thorin thought they've got mystical dispute. Wow. So I like this play of just dropping down the crab and your triumph. Yeah, and O3 uh, at least can block, jump in front of one of the princesses to kind of conserve your life total a little bit. Leaves up a, a black for your Thieves Guild Enforcer at the end of turn. Uh, Fable Passage next turn. So it looks pretty good. And Oof. 
There is that Colothes. <laughs> I'm probably not saying that right, but <laughs> Colothes. I, was, I actually Col just made the <laughs> subconscious decision to just say it however you are saying it. So, <laughs> so. <laughs> I never know. I never know anymore. All right. I like clothes. Nice, so nice mill <laughs> action happening over here with this fatal passage coming down. Uh, love to see that. Thieves Guild and Force are getting in. Mythic Michaela down to 17. Hallie's still at 18 life. Rune Crab being able to kind of hold things down there. Clothie's going to change life totals here, though, most likely. Unless we're going to that big. Is that an, one of the oxes sitting there yes. in the escape? Okay. Yes, we did see an ox. Love that card good. because it looks like Mythic Michaela only has one card in hand. So just the fact of like refilling your hand a little bit is very, very important for this, this yes, deck. One of the great things is that Mythic Michaela has two Love Shark Beasts on an adventure. So it's kind of yeah. like having two more cards in hand. But not. That's true. But one. not. <laughs> <laughs> so we will see that Ox hit. And, well, it will just be Disdainful Stroked, of course. But it did bring that Thieves Guild Enforcer back down to a 1-1. One, one, so losing the pump. Although the cards are still milled. They're still gone. They're still away from Mythic Michaela's deck. But it did kind of bring down Hallie's clock here a bit. Drown the luck on the love struck beast. And another Ooh, drown another the lock wow. To replace it. <laughs> wow. <laughs> Going to go ahead and get that soaring thought thief down to Milmythic Michaela, filling up Milmythic Michaela's graveyard even more. So she probably will be able to cast that ox again or try. But. Yeah, Drown in the Lock is waiting. Yes, it, it'll be interesting. I'm curious to see how many cards are left after Mythic Michaela escapes the Ox if Drown in the Lock will matter. Very curious to see. Yeah, this Colothes is like really going to mess up the Luris. <laughs> Uh, and I don't think that there's any way to get rid of it. Ooh, scorching Dragonfire on the no. Soaring Thought Thief? Nope. <laughs> and that was a quick resolve. Mythic Michaela, no cards left in hand. The one ox in the bin that I think we're going to see momentarily and a Lovestruck Beast waiting in the wings on an adventure right now. So... Hallie tapped out at the moment, so we yes. know that this ox is going to It's resolve. safe. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I mean, she has to draw cards here. I mean, we need to fill the hand. Um, so now having three cards plus the Love Struck Beast, I mean, Mythic Michaela is definitely still in this. I don't know how many cards she has in her library, but I don't think that she's been milled that much. Uh, looks. I saw oh. 19 in exile and four in the graveyard. So that's six in the graveyard and 19 exiled. So I think we've got a ways to go. Yes. And so, like we said, there are three ox in Mythic Michaela's deck, and they are not uh, legendary. So we may, you know, see more hit the battlefield at some point. We've only seen one so far. Now, with the clothes, you're pretty much just targeting the creatures, right? I mean, I think Michaela is trying to prevent that recursion from Luris. Um yeah, but it looks like Mythic Kayla actually targeted their own graveyard here. And yeah, that's what I was land. So it looks like Mythic Michaela will choose to make a red mana. Extra mana. Cast an edge wall innkeeper. And with two love shark beasts. Ooh, is this a gold? Oh, okay. 
that's a, that, I mean, that's a lot of card draw here from Edgewall Innkeeper. And nothing that Hallie can do about that right now with just the Luris and the Into the Story in hand at the moment. And it's an expensive Into the Story at the moment, too, because Michaela keeps eating cards from Yeah, the exactly. And we're going to see a chump block from Thieves Guild Enforcer. And it looks like Rune Crab going to jump in. I like that. So the plan is to drop Luris and just recast. Yeah, maybe one of those maybe. creatures. Another into the story. Mythic Michaela hoping maybe, uh, I'm sorry, Hallie hoping to maybe mill out Mythic Michaela before her 11 life points turn into zero. So. <laughs> yes. It's like Soaring Thought Thieves going to get in, mill another two. I see two mammoths hitting the bin right there. You know what another scary thing is? Clavis is on six loyal, uh, six six pips. You know, so oh yeah, that's are, a good point. That uh, creature <laughs> is going to be activated soon. Yeah, it, it's very very close. Just one, you know, an edge wall innkeeper, a love one pip away, a bone crusher giant, and one pip. So that's all we need: a red or a green. And uh, that 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 would change the clock here quite a bit, I believe. Oh. Ooh. Speaking of changing the clock, that is, wow. that is one way to do it. Oh my goodness. Okay, so attack in with everything. The, uh, yeah. <laughs> I I mean, I can't do math this quick. Four five. I mean, I would I would attack I, with Colossus because it's indestructible anyways, and the ox I, is a five three, and the love struck is a yeah. yeah. I like seven, this attack and holding back the innkeeper um, <laughs> to refill your hand if you need to it is seven damage in the air and then a whole lot of damage on the ground i don't think hallie survives here so i i think if mythic michaela just hits the attack button i think we might be moving on to yeah that's i think that's exactly 10 even eddie okay I, 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 <laughs> like, <laughs> I like the attack you know just get in that extra point if you need to you know uh but yeah Yes. That's game. That, that is, is game. Game. Well, you know, I'd love to see a game three. So. I do love it. And that early ox was really, even though the first time Mythic Michaela cast it, it got, it, it, it got countered. And it just didn't matter because, you know, a few more cards went into Mythic Michaela's graveyard. So she recast it and it just stuck. And that was the, that was the game being able to keep, the graveyard low although Hallie spent the whole game milling cards over just because she kept that that critical mass of cards in the graveyard below like you know seven it was it was all good so an impressive an impressive showing from the team or adventure side and ooh ooh this hand yeah. um <laughs> yeah this is this is better uh I did did you notice Hallie actually took out all of the cripplings um, and added in the cling, which I think that that is an awesome move. Yes. Cling to dust, you know, could definitely make or break this game, especially if it goes like game two did. And we'll see a tap land from Hallie's side to start things off. I think Michaela will play a pathway. And Eddie. Eddie's here. <laughs> Ooh, eliminate. Now I see Hallie has definitely um, prioritized their presence on the board over killing whatever Mika Mythic Michaela is doing. So things like casting a Soaring Thought Thief here instead of trying to kill the Edgewall Innkeeper, uh, holding it maybe for a later threat or something like that. But because um, card revenge can be scary, you know, like yeah. Once What's your like drawing, you know, three and four cards off of edge one. Exactly. Like, oh, no. <laughs> it's a scary thing. Absolutely. I mean, usually it doesn't really happen until probably about right now. Um, so maybe she's just gonna kill it oof, like next turn before before Mythic Michaela gets too much card draw off that, but 
I mean, you will see that uh, Mythic Michaela did play the Love Struck Beast without playing Heart's Desire first. So perhaps Mythic Michaela thinks that Hallie doesn't have the removal for an Edgewell Innkeeper and is counting on being able to attack next turn. A good point. But we know that that's false. But uh, like, it's up to Hallie. Like, do you kill the Love Struck Beast or do you kill the Edgewell Innkeeper at this point? And it looks like Love Struck Beast is going to is a bigger threat be eliminated. Really smart play, actually. Oh, See, I, like I would have done the opposite. I would have been like, get rid of the innkeeper right away. I don't like it. But like, <laughs> that was really well thought out. <laughs> no, I, I think that that was actually a, a very, you know, good sequence of events. Like, I, I thought it was well played from, Building, from both sides. Yeah, exactly. You know? Now Helly's word state is built up uh, with the depth touch, the flyers. We'll see and another foretold card on Mythic Michaela's side. So... We have some mystery cards going on. Oh, there's an ox. Unfortunately, not too red on Michaela's side right now, but ox is in the graveyard. Got to do some some work. Got to do it quick. Michaela at nine life points at the moment. So, oh, we have a cling to dust in hand, though. Yeah. Okay. I mean, do you just cling the ox? Oh. That's, that's, that's it. Could not do it fast <laughs> enough. <laughs> Oh my god, I'm like holding my breath. I oh, knew it was a song. I knew it was a song coming. <laughs> uh, which, yeah, just it like had to be done. I totally agree. And we need the ox. Exile. Like if if Hallie cracks this fabled passage, will they have? It's five other cards, so not quite enough. Even cracking the fabled passage to be able to um, escape the cling to dust. So a lot of escaping going on here or not going on. And Michaela does have the second red source here. It'll be interesting to see if she does just decide to fire off the ox. It will shrink all the rogues. I think, you know, get a big body on the battlefield. Not sure what Michaela has in hand, but it's probably better just to stay alive at this moment. <laughs> So at least one land hits the bin there. Yeah. The Ooh. A mystical, mystical dispute. Waiting for that extra turns, maybe. We'll see. Now, looks like the flyers are going to get in here. Mill a couple of lands on Michaela's side. Bring her back over that threshold to pump the rogues up. So Mithem Killer will take four, dropping down to five. Hallie's still at a very healthy 18 life here. And uh, we'll see. Cracking the Fabled Passage. Swamp and an island. Still not enough to escape the cling to dust, but... Putting Loris in hand is not a bad consolation prize at the moment. And being able to leave up Mystical Dispute at the same time. So, Yeah, I mean, at this point in the game when your opponent's at five, I'm just looking at Mystical Disputing, whatever comes down, <laughs> we'll see. <laughs> Totally get it. There's no real good attacks for Mythic Michaela at this point. Uh, Thieves, Thieves Guild Enforcer mm -hmm. has Death Touch and would just let the Ox through because Allie, being at 18 life, can afford to uh, take an attack exactly. here. You know, Edgewell Innkeeper would be forced to jump on the way back and just would not be good. <laughs> Second Ox of Aganis here. Taking care of a bunch more cards in the graveyard, shrinking those rogues yet again, drawing this three fresh going, cards. Going to resolve. And I like that. I mean, Heli has flyers. Um yeah. We she can afford to take the damage, so so Mythic Michaela gonna deal six here and do we have any creatures in the graveyard? No, we do not. Something to bring back with Loris, where um, uh, Hallie is looking for right now. So we've got 
Soaring Thought Thief and Merfolk Wind Robber able to fly over that ox's head and get in, bringing Mythic Michaela down to three. Ooh, is that another ox? The third ox. <laughs> oh, wow. The oxes are so good. <laughs> I, heard you, I heard you like ox with your ox. <laughs> so many ox. All the ox. Yes. Oh, and the mystical the disputing the saw it coming. Even though we don't have anything, um, or Hallie doesn't have anything in in her graveyard, right? Yeah, but at the same time, but still, um, Luris is like Luris is a big part of it. But another mystical dispute. Yes, Hallie wow. having the three mana able to battle pay for again. It. <laughs> I ha uh, wow. At that point, I could see Hallie not wanting to hold the dispute for any more. Just get a little value out of there. Draw out maybe like uh, another counter spell from Michaela. Michaela obviously unable to, like not having another saw coming or a hard counter spell. Just a, a mystical dispute that Hallie was able to pay for. Hallie doesn't have anything else in hand to protect at this point. So the only thing that yeah. Hallie would be, um, and she's tapped out of believe and just. Yeah, so Hallie Mythic would Michaela play. can play whatever she would like. So I hope those you know, we'll see if those cards that Michaela drew off of Ox were any good. And it doesn't look like that because she's gonna ship them. She's so. going to pitch it. <laughs> it was a mammoth and a land. Hmm. So having another five through on the battlefield feels pretty good. Uh being at three life doesn't feel as good uh was... <gasps> stomping luris wow stomping. that was that was a big play there yes um yeah so she's just gonna attack here and possibly cast the bone crush giant we'll see it depends on how many cards are in that graveyard at the moment because uh, it looks like only two so because cracking fable passage you're putting another card in your graveyard yeah you're very very scared of because if oh, you inadvertently pump yeah. those rogues you, are you don't want to pump in the, the air <laughs> that's a good point oh so my gosh this is a that is tricky this is a very tricky spot here so we'll see edgewell innkeeper over cracking that fabled passage eliminate the draw on hallie's side able to cast the cling to dust at this point but there aren't any oxen to eat so wow having the ox was game changing having three oxes <laughs> was game changing yes all three oxen just debuffing play. debuffing those thought the, the the rogues is like huge right here um oh my gosh i am terrified <laughs> I don't know what's gonna happen. <laughs> this is this is game three. This is such a clutch game three. I mean, what it, what is the target here with eliminate? Uh, I mean, nothing have, right now. Like you have to kill Just, one of the Edgewall innkeepers, and the thing is, that you cling to dust to gain life, life, like yeah. or to draw a card. Like we'll see what Holly decides to do here, because even at G gaining life is only going to buy you another draw step anyway, so you might as well draw a card, right? Oh, and look, yeah, another cling to dust. <laughs> oh my goodness. Wow. Holly debating what we can do at this point, and it looks like the only thing to be done no is option. So good game wow good game to ho uh, both holly and mythic michaela and uh that was that was some pretty phenomenal playing it's definitely difficult with mythic michaela's starting deck to have so many expensive spells and like to get it down to i mean ox is sort of an expensive spell but not if you're casting it from your graveyard right for two <laughs> mana that was pretty <laughs> I was pretty Refilling great. Filling your hand. Yeah. yeah. I mean, was, that was definitely the game changing point those, was drawing or having three oxes, I think yeah. for sure. Um, what an awesome game to watch though. That was well I had me by on both sides. 
the edge of my seat. <laughs> oh yeah. <laughs> Just I was like, oh, what are you doing? I had to make sure not to go too far away from the microphone because I didn't want to be like <laughs> I just popped my headphones out. <laughs> so <laughs> and oh I just want to say gosh. a big thank you to to Mythic Michaela for the raid. You are fabulous. So thank you very much for that. Welcome all you raiders to the VML. We are oh, week four. So if you don't know us, we are the Venus and Mercury League. We put the spotlight on people of marginalized genders within the magic community. And we send one of them to a championship esports thing at the end of 2021, 2022. One of those Figure things. that out because Wizards is great. <laughs> Wizards is great. NRG series is great. Channel Fireball is great. Y'all are great. So thank you for being here and supporting us. And uh, since you might want to get to know us a little bit better, let's take it over to one of our pop quizzes done by our very own Ellie of the Veil. So we're going to take a look Ooh. at one of those right now. Welcome, hi, you of Silver Pole College. I am your Witherboom professor proctoring over your pop quiz today. Rules are really simple. Uh, I ask you three questions, you answer them, they're either correct or incorrect. If they are correct, you get a point. If they're incorrect, I report your failure to your Silver Quill superiors promptly, just the way y'all like it. So, I hope you're ready. Wow. <laughs> All right. Question... Get on. <laughs> Question number one. How many times has the Mighty Linguini won the VML? Hmm, Ellie, this one I know intimately well, and it is twice. I know that because she has two crowns that she keeps showing me, and she also has a baseball cap that says two-time champion on it. So the answer is two. Two is correct. What is the name of the Lorehold Elder Dragon? So the Lorehold Elder Dragon, one of the best of the cycle, probably. Seven mana, mm -hmm. has flying haste, is a 5-5. Five five. Uh, when it come when it attacks, you can look at the top six cards of your library, and you can cast an instant or sorcery with power. No, with mana value less than his power, and his name is Velomachus. So I get extra points, bonus points, bonus points for Hayi. You will get one point for getting the name correctly, and I will mercifully not deduct any points for you taking up all of our time. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Question number three. How many colleges are there in Strixhaven and how many should there be? Well, there are five colleges in Strixhaven, but frankly, there should only be one because Silver Coil is the best by a country mile. How did I know you were going to answer that that way? <laughs> Really, it should be four. I think Silver Quill should have its own college far, far away. <laughs> yeah, you that way. Well, maybe you're right, because that way we don't have to be near the rest of you plebs. Oh, that would be so great. <laughs> Just kidding. All in good fun. You'll get three points, and I will not report your sass to your superiors, because I'm sure they would like that sort of thing. So class is dismissed. Go run along. Welcome. Oh, all right. That was fun. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Welcome back. Um, I wish I could have heard that. <laughs> oh. <laughs> I was like, I'm going to go to the stream and watch this pop quiz because I want to know what it is. <laughs> well, do you know? I like the silver quill scarf, though. How many colleges are in Strixhaven? How many colleges? Yes. How many There's schools? five. See? That ding. See, you'd get a point. Oh, that was it? <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> you'll just have nice. to watch the replay later. Oh, I will. Up, either on Aspirant CCG here on Twitch or on YouTube when we put it up. So make sure you check that out. That was fun. That was a lot of fun. For all of you who don't know, that was one. Uh, that was actually, I mean, two of our fellow casters. We have Ellie of the Veil, a wonderful interviewer, big Wither Bloom enthusiast, and Hayu Yu, who obviously is a huge Silver Quill enthusiast. Uh, 
was our interview nice. there. So a lot of fun. It's okay that they're both wrong and Laura holds the best house, but we'll, we'll move on from there. Best, best school. What school are you, Talia? I knew you were going to ask me that. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> because like, okay, when I, when it first came out, I was like, silver quill, no questions asked. And then I took the test, right? And oh, then no. it said I was wither bloom. And then I took another test and it said I was lore hold. And then I was like drafting it. And I really kept drafting Prismari. And I was like, I don't know what I am. I just like them all. <laughs> <laughs> I like them all for different reasons. That's so, so nice. it's hard. Yeah. I just wear all the scarves at one time. I, and I, you're that's... Stay super warm that way. <laughs> <laughs> great. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> I'm in Houston. Definitely won't be wearing any scarves anytime soon, but yeah. Oh, they are that's cool. fantastic. All right. Well, <laughs> I am very much ready to get into our next matchup here we round just, two yes we stay in division one and i hope you haven't had enough of rogues because okay i've got some rogues for you and then i've got rogues on top of your rogues so <laughs> let's take a look at the first side of this rogues mirror here we have honk uh who is self-proclaimed witherbloom here uh, so they have brought the deck of the week, as we have established, in Luris Rogues. So pretty stock list here. You can see uh, mm -hmm. Luris in the side where we have the you know, Heartless Axe in the main, Into the Story, Soaring Thought Thief, Rune Crabs, you know, Four of uh, Soaring Thought Thief, all, all those Four of Drown in the Lock. So pretty pretty stock list uh, for Skyclave Shade in the sideboard. So I know that that's a big weapon I against decks like uh, Ultimatum and things like that. I love the sky skyclave shade, um, but yeah, I don't see it get played a lot, so it's gonna be really exciting. And it's a fancy one too. It's the, the it is fancy one. <laughs> I do enjoy that design. So we are seeing that Honk is hoping to stick an early threat here and be able to defend it, trying only to tap out if they think they won't get punished for it. So, uh, and Rogues is definitely a deck that rewards experience and honk has experience with the deck so let's take a look at the other side here um we've got blazon who is of the prismari school so <laughs> also on loris rogues uh considering rogues to be the best deck in the format and has had great success with it throughout the league so again rewards uh experience blazon also with experience so we're gonna see two uh, very well Ro versus rogue rogue versus rogues rogues versus ro rogue rogues masters here so i'm i'm very much looking forward to this match very much uh one of the cool things i saw here was the baleful masteries that they yeah, have i was about to Ooh. ask you about that because i haven't had a chance to play with rogues at all um what does that card bring to this matchup well the the biggest thing is that it will it's removal right it, it is removal. It's the one that oh, it costs three exile. and a black. And if you play one and a black instead, it's like the anti kick. Like the the mana cost is the actual like quote unquote kicker cost, and then it has an alternate cost within the text where it says if you pay one and a black, your opponent draws a card. But if you play the three oh. and a black, you don't. so and it exiles target creature or planeswalker. So it will exile. So this works against you know um you know any decks that want to recur their threats with like Luris or Agony right. or. Uh, a Skyclave Shade is the big one here. So having two of the Baleful Mysteries, uh, ma ma not Mysteries, Masteries in the main. <laughs> yeah, that's a great mystery. card. Yes. I mean, are you, ideally, you're not letting the opponent draw a card, right? I mean, you're you're right. waiting until you have the mana for this. That's what oh, you're we're hoping. Gonna we're going to see two room crabs <laughs> over here, mirror, mirror matching. Well, like each other here. Yeah, pinch off. <laughs> one of them is one of them is a fancier ruin crab. I I don't know how I feel. About uh, yeah, I mean it's a crab. They're both they're both <laughs> they're both crabs. They're both crab. They are both crabs. You, they're absolutely. I both mean crabs. they're annoying. <laughs> no. And another one. So <laughs> it's crab rave. That's what it is, right? Oh. Oh gosh, that will be stuck in my head all night. Uh, I mean, I actually don't. It's a great think, song. 
I know a little bit about it. Embarrassingly enough, I, I had like that boomer moment where my my ten year old was the one that told me about Crab Rave. He's like, "No, Ma, it's a cool song." I was like, "Is it?" And he's like, "Yeah." I'm like, "I'm so old." It's pretty cool. <laughs> it's pretty cool. <laughs> I have to agree. So, All right. So looks like we got those two uh, thieve guilds in the graveyard over there. Yes. And. Honk is probably going to drop down that Soaring Thought Thief. Whether or, or not try it, yeah. to. <laughs> well, oh, there we go. It is eliminated. I mean, that's one of the key cards in this deck, um, in my opinion. So get rid of it. Yeah. So now we see a missed Although, land drop on the side of Blazon, though, here. So oof. that's kind of scary, especially when you have your Ruin Crab out there and it's not even doing its Ruin Crab work. So just need to get that field passage and we'll catch up, you know? Yes. Oh, there we go. And we'll see an Agadim's Awakening joining two lands two into lands. the graveyard. Mystical dispute on one of the mind. No yeah. card draw for you. Uh, Eliminating the room crab. Yeah, I would say that at this point in time, Honk is definitely, oh, with the Soaring Thought Thief on the draw, absolutely uh, a little bit ahead here. Yes, I would tend to agree with that. And with an into the story coming in here, there we go. Four new cards. Oof. That's Pretty good ones. Those are some good cards. <laughs> <laughs> Mystical dispute among them. So and able to cast that on blue spell here, but looks like nothing from Blazon's side at the moment. So Honk will just play another land and kind of keep at it. Oh, we'll see Mer Merfolk Wind Robber getting in here. Ping in for one. Blazon dropped down to no, 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 no. Wait, that's a soaring thought Oof. thief. But oh no, it's gonna be mystical disputed. Absolutely. I thought Honk was gonna remind Blazon of their manners and say that they didn't say didn't say please. <laughs> but apparently they remembered, so Honk had to use mystical dispute instead. <laughs> No, much more mana efficient. Yeah, I was about to say to definitely more efficient <laughs> on the mana because we're we're baiting it out here with the thief, and then uh, saving it. Yes. Didn't say please. Didn't say please for that drown lock though. So thieves guild and force are going to come down. Wow. Listen, that's enough. Uh, Honk yeah. just cemented on the battlefield match. too hard. Yeah, that was a quick quick little game there. Uh, you know, honestly. <laughs> One side I could see running away, you know, either one side or the other running away of the game earlier. You know, if anybody lets this game out of the control, their control, they're just going to get run over, either milled or by damage or something. So I, I don't see this being as grindy of a matchup. It's just like a well timed, it's almost like a dance. You just have to well time, you know, like no one to play your creatures, no one to play your counters, no one to hold your counters. And, you know, it's a. A difficult matchup, I'd imagine, a difficult mirror to navigate, but I, I like I, I like I, I like that grinding. honk added dead weight. That was perfect. I mean, you definitely don't want to be adding like crippling fear in a mirror match like this. <laughs> that would be <laughs> bad. Be so I mean <laughs> I uh, they know what they're doing. They put in the dead weights and um took out some of the didn't say please. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's one we'll of the more expensive counters. It is. It is, exactly. And I think that they put in a disdainful stroke, possibly. I'm not sure. They have negate and essence scatter in the sideboard as well. So, so there, there's definitely a lot of counter magic, and you want... Just the, the the cheapest threats and the, the the cheapest spells that you can stuff in your deck against rogues. That whether you're playing yeah. the rogues versus rogues mirror, whatever deck you're playing, if you're playing against rogues, you sideboard and you're like, how do I bring my curve down to like one and a half? So, you know, like exactly. <laughs> how do I make none of my cards cost more than three? Right. So we'll see. Heartless Act take care of that Skyclave shade. Heartless Act is now. not the 
Yeah, not the worst for oh, oh. Anna Kling. Okay. Hi. <laughs> I was like, it's still me. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> you blinked, you missed it. So. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> now, I mean, I think here you just hold up, you know, your drown the lock and your thief and just yeah, that looks Relax. like that's gonna be the plan. It looks yeah. like that's gonna be the plan. Actually, bolting in the the Agadim's uh, mm-hmm. land here to be able to have that option. Being at sixteen, we'll see thieves guild enforcer coming in. Is it going? Oh, eliminated. Eliminated, but not countered. After it mills two land, an island and a fable passage will be milled. Oh, look, sky cliche. <laughs> Love that card. We'll see it. that be the play here from Honk's side. Here at 16, Life Will Blazon is at 23. No play for now. But you know, you know, Rogue's favorite thing is to play on your turn anyway. Exactly. So. <laughs> Looks like the 3-1 will get across, bringing Blazon back down to 20. And of one mind, of Draw one two mind. Cards. Doesn't Please. resolve. <laughs> yes. Okay. So, thieves. Landing. Okay, two lands. I think Hong could afford uh, to lose two lands. We'll see. Thieves Guild Enforcer getting in here. Soaring Thought Thief. I'm gonna follow that up. Mill a couple more cards, a soaring thought Ooh, thief, and soaring an thought thief. awakening, and that will pump up the thieves guild enforcer here. And it's like end of turn, flashing in their own thieves guild enforcer. Hunk will do that. Mystical dispute is the draw here. We've had Blazon stuck on three lands again, so. But definitely. Putting up a fight? Yes. Soaring Thought Thief. Thinking about blocking here, it looks like we'll go for the trade with the Thieves Guild Enforcer. So Blazon will take three, dropping down to 17. Honk at a lower life total at 12, but able to take care of Blazon's other threat here with that dead weight. And just pass the turn with uh, Drown on the Lock and Eliminate up. As well as Mystical Dispute. Going to swing for three. And scry before we maybe into the story. We'll see. Land on top. Land. Looks good. Looks good. I like just holding up your your counters here. Yes, and um, land definitely have some value at this point. Let's see. Mystical dispute. It's like that thing you know where you ask questions. You're like mystical dispute. Mer- yeah, wind robber. <laughs> <laughs> is this? I good? mean, does it resolve? Oh, Ooh, drown in the lock. Counter your counter. Mm-hmm. Looks like it will honk. Counter answer. your counter counter. Could all over a little merfolk wind robber, right? But this is tight game though. It does symbolize card draw oh. as well. The Merfolk Wind Robber, no, perhaps they, they sack it to be able to draw a card, so mm-hmm. kind of just replaced itself. Tapped out now, though, on Blazing Side. We'll see that into the story hitting here. Able to another into Ooh. the story, so even more card draw. A couple of untapped lands going on here. Uh, able to keep up Drown in the Lock, so. Looking pretty good from Honk's side as the Skyclave Shade is holding on and doing damage. Blazing just dropping down below Honk's life total. We've got 12 to 11. Yeah, I guess the only answer to the Skyclave Shade is the uh, Baleful Mastery. Yes. Is there... we, we do know that Blazin has two of those in their deck. Yeah. So... Or right. 
All right. Let's draw some more cards. Wow. How about that? <laughs> so many cards. So many cards. And still able to hold up Drown in the Luck. So yeah, this is like really good on Honk side. Into the story. Uh, yeah, let's uh, definitely counter spell the card draw. Right. No card draw for Oof. you. And Honk is going to take this mirror down two games to none. And well, congratulations to Honk. Yeah. That was also intense. Yeah, that match. was a, that was a pretty crazy match. Like honestly, but the, you could see it, Honk with the the you know establishing themselves early onto the battlefield and just being able to control it from there. Uh, Blazon with a few missed land drops does not make things any easier from their side. But good games to both of our players there. Both of those players actually move on to three and one. So you know both doing really really well this season. So that, you know keep awesome. on and keep it on for them and. Uh, that was fantastic. That was wonderful. I don't know. Skyclave Shade MVP. I want more now. So <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm I'm ready to I'm ready to take in our take in our next match. Are we doing? Are is that what we're doing? Oh. Going for it? Oh, but before that, we're gonna take a quick break. So we will see you all in just a few minutes. Don't go anywhere.
Hello and welcome back to week four of the VML, the Venus and Mercury League, where we put the spotlight on people with marginalized genders within the magic community. I am joined here by the wonderful Talia Vez. How are you doing? Good. Thank you so much for having me. These days have been really crazy. And thank you so much for being here. Oh, I'm so, so happy that you are here. It, it, it's been so exciting. I feel like your your excitement is like contagious and then I'm like feeding it back to you, you're feeding it back to me. And we're like exponentially <laughs> rising. Like awesome. Love it. Love <laughs> so it. This, I feel this, that this too. Phenomenal. I, I absolutely it's good I, vibes. I love having it. It is good vibes. It's like it's <laughs> all around. I love it. I love it. <laughs> so we just got off of a pretty fantastic like rose mirror, actually. You know, people hear hear the word like mirror and they're like, uh like mm-hmm. you think of like mirrors that you hate. Like long drawn mirrors or control mirrors and you're like back oh, and forth gosh <laughs> you know when we were thinking yeah. about what features we wanted to do this week you're like are you sure you want to do a rogues mirror i'm like we'll do it and it was fantastic so it ended up being great yeah <laughs> <laughs> it, did. it all worked out it all worked out so <laughs> no it was fantastic um but i am ready to get into our next match here coming out of uh class the number 102 we have uh, Ruby Polanco versus Rebecca Black. It's a Sultai Ultimatum deck and a this is where I got it. The Prismizit Dragons. Prismizits. <laughs> so Prismizits. Fancy, fancy fun deck year. So Okay. I feel I like have, we haven't seen enough of this. <laughs> I haven't seen this actually. Uh I'm gonna pull this up a little bit bigger to take oh, a yeah. look but uh so something that oh this is a new this is using the new prismari dragon mm-hmm. and i've never even seen or played this card before but it's a flying three four for four mana and whenever it enters the battlefield you make a treasure token so kind of similar to how the goldspan works uh but goldspan is in there of course as well uh this is gonna be really really interesting so there's a lot of have this is a very heavy spell deck actually with like the frostbite fire prophecy prismari command another new card i love seeing these new cards get played um and magma opus yes and that is lots of lots of removal lots of control uh with the saw saw it coming as well uh this is going to be a really good game Yes, a card that we were seeing a lot in historic, actually, in Magma Opus with the uh, the Gear Hulk, you know, like discard this card to ramp up to Gear Hulk to flash back this card. So oh, uh, definitely yeah. like an interesting an interesting deck here. Um, I I love it. Gold span we call it Gold Ramp Dragon. So a Gold Ramp Dragon to ramp up to uh, whatever it is that you are looking to do. Same thing with uh, the Galazeth Prismari, the Prismari Dragon. I I always want to. Subvert the the Z and the L. I just want to switch. I want to call him Gazaleth, and it's Galazeth, and I um Galazeth, 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 which sounds a lot cooler than Gazaleth. But I just <laughs> like hey, I should just say it the right way. It's just it's just who I am as a person. So an expressive iteration, definitely a card that I've been impressed with that you're seeing. We see a lot of so around. So yeah, a lot of really cool new cards in this deck. Like with Strixhaven being sort of underpowered in comparison to other um sets that are in standard right now <laughs> hell drain but um th- it's it's really good to see some cool new cards so i am exactly. very excited to see this one in action but p- speaking of um powerful things let's take a look at sultai ultimatum like our second most popular deck this week in the vml and obviously the key card name emergent ultimatum finding Powerful cards like Kirabes the Sea God or Tybalt Cosmic Imposter, Vorinclex, Professor Onyx, All Runs Epiphany. So doing all those big silly things for a lot less mana. <laughs> yeah. So how does this matchup look up against the dragons? I mean, there's Eliminate, Heartless Act, uh, Extinction Event, a Shadow's Verdict in the main board. There's... In Valky, also you can play down uh, on turn two. Poly K can fight. There's a lot of removal. Um, this is going to be very interesting. Oh, Asika's es- Chariot in there as well. Yes, it definitely is interesting. It depends on what kind of draw I think Ruby ends up with here because Ruby is playing 
a four cultivated copy deck. A lot of concentrating on the actual ramping and right. Um, so it depends, like because if 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 Ruby is going, you know, turn three, turn four, cultivate to cultivate, and and um, Rebecca is able to you know, get uh, uh, established on the board quicker and like get that gold spend mm -hmm. dragon going and get Galazeth like running here. If they, if they have a nice enough curve, then it'll be a very hard to stop uh, the point. Prismari dragon. And Rebecca also does have counter spells, sought coming and uh, things like that. And, and in the sideboard, three negates, two mystical disputes, uh, two disdainful strokes. So things like that uh, to be able to either protect their threats or keep Ruby from casting those big silly spells. Oh yeah. So, <laughs> That's true. So we will see how how this match pans out. See if Rebecca is able to establish that quick aggressive start um and be able to protect her threats or if Ruby will be able to overwhelm her and ramp up too quickly. We will be watching from Rebecca's side who is the Prism is it dragon player. So we're going to check this deck out and like a nice little curve here. So three lands. Very uh, nice. Frostbite yeah. probably not great, but. <laughs> yeah. And um, Rebecca does also have faceless Haven. So hopefully she's going to be hitting another uh, snow land pretty. Oh, there we go. <laughs> right. <laughs> it's like. There you knew. Is... Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. So, I mean, do you do you cast this dig card? I don't know. I don't know. Looks like Rebecca's thinking about it. Yeah, it's definitely a consideration here. Being able to keep up, saw it coming as well without foretelling it. But we'll see the expression of iteration here, revealing two lands and the... All Runs Epiphany, which we put in hand. All right. Fable Passage here to fetch up a third land. That will come in tapped. And we'll be able to pass the turn back to Ruby, who will play a tap land and also pass the turn back. Frostbite, kind of a dead card in this matchup. If you can double up on them, it can kill a Vorinclex, but still not the best card here. Oh, yeah. Just uh, foretelling the saw coming, holding it up. Hmm. We get to see a cultivate, maybe. We'll see what Ruby decides to do here. A full grip on Ruby's side. Another tap land playing one of the, the ballet uh, judge recovery as the sanctuary side another iteration it's interesting it has the choice of a land prismari command and all runs epiphany it would be able to cast prismari's command this turn but looks like going to just take a land play the land keep saw it coming foretold not going to foretell anything else right here. Can always play Brazen Borrow at the end of turn. Galazeth Prismari looking sad in the hand. Yeah, I mean, what would Rebecca be looking to do with Prismari Command? Uh, there's nothing to target. Yeah. Would, would you just be like maybe wanting the the card draw? I don't know. We'll Honestly, see. We'll see what we'll see what she decides to do. You get to choose two. So making a treasure. Drawing two cards, you do have to discard two cards. The frostbites are not doing anything, um, so yeah. I actually really like this. Yes, frostbites were kind of dead cards in hand, so prismatic man definitely working out there. Followed up by a fire prophecy, which I mean, yeah, it's the same, I, same idea, yeah. I suppose, but you know, <laughs> able to make a land drop here, and um, Rebecca would be able to cast the Galazeth. With the salt and protect coming it. Up. Yeah. That resolved pretty quick, though. So. Heartless act. Heartless act. I think I think you do it. I think you protect it. She's thinking about it. 
Oh, oh. Uh, arrows on the resolve and it will resolve here. <laughs> Holding up that saw it coming, perhaps for one of the, the bigger bombs that the bigger, we I might mean, have later. Yeah, that, that does make sense. And Rebecca is able to foretell this turn and still keep up saw it coming. Because of all the treasures. Lots of treasure. I love treasures. So do dragons. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a big EDH player and I will like all every deck has smothering type. <laughs> Ooh. Binding of the gods. Yeah. Binding of, binding of the old gods. Not really having a target though, but like it does give you a little bit of ramp. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't. That's enough. They wanted to keep their treasure token, but they wouldn't keep it. And I'm, I'm not sure. Rebecca thinking about you know, sacking both treasures countered that, perhaps like you said, to keep from ramping into better mana for a an ultimatum over the next turn or two. Yeah. I mean, Ruby has enough mana to play like things like Vornclex and the Elder Gargaroth. We'll see. But, I mean, Rebecca does have the Brazen Borrower. Yes. And so, Rebecca and also, after saw it coming, there was no pause. So knowing that the coast was clear for all runs Epiphany here. So probably feels pretty good. Absolutely. Oh no, a bird. <laughs> <laughs> Just so, a one one bird. Yes. Ruby will So that card in hand out. deals four damage. And then you tap two permanents and you make a four four. Yes. And then and you, you draw, draw two, two cards. cards. Oh my yeah, gosh. It does a lot. That is that is a lot. There are many words for that. But, I mean, you know, eight mana, I think it's fair, you know. To, oh, doing, for sure. What what Ruby wants to do only costs seven mana, and it puts, like, big seven and eight mana things into play, so. <laughs> well, that's a card. Goldspan Dragon. Goldspan Dragon. But right now, the shields Nothing are down to protect it. Down. Yeah. Oh, tapping out Cassiorion and then with pass nothing pass. to blink. Um, and I saw it coming. So, yeah. Going to bounce the Yorion. Probably throwing down the Goldspan Dragon. Oh, yeah. Making some tokens. Attacking. It's a Dargan time. Making eight. <laughs> Oof. Yes, that will be That's a it. big hit. Ruby will drop down to six. That is nine damage that came across there. And ooh. saw it coming to kind of keep anything from really bad happening. Another land on Ruby's side. And we'll see emerging That's ultimatum. That's the ultimatum. Getting but countered. The timely <laughs> saw it coming here from that Rebecca was Lester. That was it. That was it. So, game one to Prism is it Dragons. Pretty fabulous. Throwing in a lot of counter magic over here on Rebecca's side and taking out all those frostbites that were dead cards. Uh, on the Soltai Ultimatum side, what are they looking to sideboard in up against this matchup? Well, I feel like um, a lot of the threats are bigger. Like eliminate doesn't take care of enough, even though it is one of the best answers for like faceless Haven. I'm not sure if that would come in. They do have a negate two tests of talents, uh, an additional mystical dispute. Um, oh yeah, El I could see I could see test of talents coming in. Um, Elder Gargaroth uh, is is uh -huh. a big, you know with with uh, reach. Um, I'm not sure if Coma comes in here. There are two in the sideboard of our Sultai player. Um, mm -hmm. The can't be counter thing is pretty 
cool, but it is expensive. Ooh, and I you want to make like sure that. that you're not dead. So I'm not right. sure if they're ramping still, you know, like uh, it depends on exactly, exactly which direction Ruby wants to go in here. So sure. And a big thanks to Ashel's flame for the host, uh, for the raid. We appreciate you. Welcome everybody. Y'all are great. Thank you for joining us here on this wonderful Friday evening. I am Lady of the Crease, joined here by the wonderful Italia Vess. And we are covering week four, the VML. So we are in the depths of a Sultai Ultimatum Prismizit Dragon. <laughs> I also <laughs> want to call them Dargons, because I always call them Dargons. But I'm like, I can't do that on the screen that I, I just did. So Where does I that come of, from? I, I Dargons. Don't, Dargons. I don't know. <laughs> I'm not sure. Like I, But I like how it sounds. I like calling them Dargons. It just hits better instead of like. Do you play D and D? I feel like this is something you made up in like D and D or something. No, but the I should. Dargons or are... Dargons. <laughs> I feel like that would be Coming. my character name <laughs> if I ever played. I feel like Dargons are really good D and D character name. <laughs> Your next animal could be Dargon. <laughs> good name. It's a good, it's a good name. I I like it so. <laughs> Oh, Ruby got to actually play a cultivate here, which is really, really nice ramping going on for this big cost deck over here. Yes. Um, um, not a whole lot to play on this side. So we're going to see this getting discarded just to make a treasure token. Yeah. Kind of an expensive hand on Rebecca's side in this game. Right. Um. You know, cards like Prismari Command to kind of refresh the hand might not be the the, the worst thing here. Can uh, foretell the Behold the Multiverse or just cast it at the end of this turn. Uh, holding up Disdainful Stroke, probably important here. Unfortunately, Disdainful Stroke would not stop this duress. So uh, Ruby able to take a little peek here, see what's going on in Rebecca's hand. You know, both at 20 life still and Rebecca with no presence on, neither with the presence on the board yet, but that's just so much more important from Rebecca's side. Um, I don't know. And it looks like Disdainful Stroke will hit the bin. Yeah. Good good for Ruby. Yes. <laughs> that was definitely a, a plus for, for Ruby there. Uh, as they make their fifth land drop, but have six mana sources at the moment, adding Yuri into hand, two mana up. Gonna go to pass the turn, but at the end of turn, Prismari Command will be cast. Draw two, discard two, oh, wow. and creating a treasure. So, yeah, th that is a couple of hits. This is tough, because you, like... You want to keep them all because <laughs> um, these are some good cards. These are some great cards and you really need that mana to even, you know, pull it off, but you do only need one. Um, oh, I like that actually. Yeah. It, she could, you, keep, it, you draw two and you're just like, can I just keep them? <laughs> I know. <laughs> all right. Grabbing that snow covered Island and let's, Get the dragon down, hopefully. Disdainful oh. stroke. Is that a thing? No? Okay. Good to go. Attacking. Making another treasure. There could always be omen of the sea. That's the pause or things like that. It doesn't look like that would be oh, the, the yeah. thing. Uh, there's, there's a few different uh, spells that could possibly be. It looks like binding of the old god is going to come down. This she does have Heartless Act as well, too, in the deck. So something to look out for. Yes. Disdainful Stroke going to take care of that Binding the Old Gods. And we will pass back to Rebecca's Great side. Use of that. Yes. Another Bone Crusher Giant. The draw for turn here. <clears throat> Little Stompy Stompy. Stompy Stompy is not doing much for this side so i like this i like this casting of the the magma instead yes lots of value oh yeah on the upkeep 
tap a couple of lands here. Debating on which lands exactly to tap, it looks like wants to go for the always blue, temple. always it, blue, like the two blue. <laughs> Saying you can't have has to be blue those lands. And we'll see if Ruby has a response here, and they will. Jawari disruption. So wow. that explains the pauses and the not that casting was... because. Being that was a good use of on. that destruction. Oh, yes. <laughs> like, it's a right? card that this definitely a... gets worse as the game goes on. Epiphany and negate. Put one of them into your hand, and the other one into exile. So really, uh, I haven't really played with the Epiphany, but that's a great way to use that because you don't lose it. <laughs> that's great. Oh, um, actually, unfortunately, you can't. Oh, from outside you can't. Your hands. <gasps> oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. No. Uh, oh. We're getting in the gate here on the ultimatum. I was thinking that's really good. <laughs> no, <laughs> like, no, you that would be fabulous. Get rid of it like. and then like still and then still foretell it. Okay. Yeah, it's I'm it's like, that's crazy. It's it's very awkward because it says that you can yeah. exile it from your hand face down. So like cards that I think are taken with like a hand. that are outside of your hand, like elite spellbinder sort of things. They're there. It's very awkward that you can't do that oh, we're gonna anymore. see a win here with this double stomp actually oh. so that's gonna be it wow look at wow bone crusher coming in in the clutch for the win Stomping. yeah can i get some upstairs oh in chat please because those last two ggs to burn in the face right both of our players both ruby polanco and rebecca black that was fabulous but Prismari dragons, Prismizit dragons. Who knew? Prismizit. Right? <laughs> Prismizit. So uh, Rebecca will move up to 4 0 on the season. So very, very impressive. Uh, a Quandric student, though, playing Prismizit. Oh. Dragons. So how does that work? <laughs> I mean, it's, it's sort of like that greatness at any cost. Sure. Oh, I, you know what? I, I'm Quandrix, but I know that Prismari is the best deck, so I'm just going to play it. So this is that okay. smart Quandrix thing. They don't they don't marry their 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 colleges. They're like, no, I'm just going to play the best deck, not my deck. I'm just makes sense. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, that was great. That was fabulous. Great game. Yeah, so it was a great game. Well played to both sides. It was definitely very enjoyable. And you know what else is enjoyable? Pop quizzes. So let's check out another one of those. I enjoy that. Let's, let's, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hand it over to Ellie of the Veil again so we can see her lovely interview skills and we'll see how many questions our next interviewee can get correct. <laughs> Welcome, Philippa of the Silver Quill. It's time for your pop quiz and I'm the Witherbloom professor who will be proctoring it. So I hope you came prepared. It's really simple. You just, I ask three questions and you answer, hopefully correctly, uh, because I hear punishments in Silver Quill aren't so great. I know. Oh no. <laughs> you can do this. So okay. question number one, name all five colleges in Strixhaven. Okay, that's easy. Silver Quill, Witherbloom, Laurelhold, Prismari, and Quandrix. Correct. Perfect. <laughs> question number two, what is the name of the plane where Strixhaven resides? <laughs> uh what plane i i knew that but i i forgot i have no clue <laughs> the name i don't of know the plane is arcavios so we'll just keep that uh we'll keep that from your uh strict state or your silver quill superiors we just won't tell them oh no <laughs> last uh, last question uh finish this phrase math is for blockers correct two out of three not so bad not so bad okay good okay <laughs> good luck with your uh, silver quill superiors though when they hear about it class dismissed i'm pretty sure math is for blockers is just my mantra like i almost said you know, it everyone says it but i don't 
under I don't know if I actually understand what it means. So <laughs> if if y'all miss it, like I use it all earlier, the time when when uh, Mythic Michaela had all those attackers and was just like figuring out who to, I I'm just like jam the space space just jam go and yeah. just be like you figure it out. Are you dead? Because if you're not dead, I'm dead. So yeah. <laughs> So yeah. Push. Okay, that makes sense actually. <laughs> so it's it's on it's on the blocker to figure out if they're dead or if I'm. Did dead. you know the second question about the which plane? plane Strix, I had no yes, idea. Yes, but I, I'm like, not. I, I knew that the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> you did your research. Yes, <laughs> you were prepared. Of course. <laughs> how can I, how More can I not holding. <laughs> Do, yeah, doing their homework. <laughs> I came up with the question. Oh, okay, okay, that makes sense. <laughs> oh, I actually, wow. I, I might, I might have to like. It's a hard one. Thick if I ever have to do a pop quiz with Ellie, because I'm like, I am not up to date on magic things. Me neither. <laughs> I don't know what's happening. <laughs> what day <Well>. is it? <laughs> Well, what I do know is happening is our final match of the evening. Oh, Please. is it? Is it already the final? Can you believe that? What the heck? We keep going. <laughs> Cue up another match. <laughs> somebody, I can't believe it. Arena. <laughs> I know. <laughs> we could play, right? <laughs> you, you oh my that. gosh! <laughs> I'm playing. I'm playing ridiculous stuff right now. I'm just playing Debalt's trickery. You don't want to see what I'm playing. But that sounds great. <laughs> That's so fabulous. It's fun. It's fun. I'm here Ridiculous. for Ridiculous. So <laughs> our last match is yeah. going to be up against. Yeah. We have guests. See, and now I broke down and we called this Mordu Sacrifice. I ah. kind of wanted to call it Racto Sacrifice because I wanted to. But there what is, is. What is making it Mardu? What is that? <laughs> that is Extus. Oh gosh, Auric. Oh, oh yeah, it's it's a um oh yeah, that's a new Strixhaven it's creature. I, it's Auric um, Overlord, I believe. It's two four for a one white black black two four. Uh, double strike Magecraft. Whenever you copy, cast or copy an instant or sorcery spell, return target non legendary creature card from your graveyard to your hand. So oh. not bad in these sacrifice decks when they're, you know, they're sacking their, their serrated scorpion, scorpion and their crocs. And, well, and not even crocs, eye twitches and things like that. So a, a good way to recur, especially those cheaper threats, those one drops, it, it's great to like, just bring it back to your hand and then recast it and then bring it back to your hand and recast it and with cards like village rights and bastion of remembrance uh, and plumb the forbidden. I, it, I love, I love this list. It this is this is a really unique take on Sacrifice. Um, and yeah. one of the new additions to this is Plum the Forbidden, which I play a lot of limited, and this card is so good. Uh, you pretty much can sacrifice your creatures and draw a card. Draw a card yeah. for each one, which is great, especially when you have uh, those valuable creatures to uh, sacrifice yes. to get triggers. And things like, like the high twitch bastion and... of remembrance out there too. So you're actually gaining life as your creatures die. So it doesn't cost you anything. Oh my gosh. So exactly. It's pretty insane. Like this, this is thing is cool. actually very, it's actually giving me like, I'm getting a little like anxious. I'm like, Oh my God, what am I at? What's my life total? <laughs> like, yeah. This there... is really interesting. Lots of dorky stuff too, with like forbidden friendship and just making like one ones to really get, value off of and the hunt getting value off of sacking those one ones yes. um now this is also a card i'm not used to seeing the predator this is a three three flying and whenever it becomes tapped you exile a target card from a graveyard and put a one one counter on it but you can also sacrifice a creature and it gains indestructible so you could just sacrifice your little one ones giving yeah. it indestructible and this thing is really hard to deal with and you can also, when you sacrifice your 1-1, one, one, it says it becomes indestructible and to tap it. So you're tapping it and that triggers when it becomes tapped, oh. you exile a card from the graveyard. So you can exile a card from, you know, like 
you probably eat your own graveyard or from your opponent's graveyard. It just says from a graveyard. It's not from your graveyard. So oh, it's you have to exile a card from a graveyard and put a counter on it. So it becomes indestructible. It's tapped. And so, so it's it's pretty good. It's a very it's, it's, synergetic. Is that a word? It, yes. Synergetic. Yeah, I, I like it. We'll go, I'm going with it. Synergetic. So if, if darken can be a word, then synergetic can be a word. <laughs> I see another white card over there in the sideboard. What is that doing for yes. this deck? It's that called is, academic probation. Yes, that is a lesson that you would get off of something like um, the hunt for specimens. And you either get to choose an online card name and then your opponents can't cast spells with that name until your next turn. It is a sorcery, though, so... Uh, and then the uh, other option is to choose target non-land permanent until your next turn. It can't attack, block, and its activated abilities can't be activated. So it's like like sort of like a pacifism. This is a great card. Yeah, it, it's it definitely like takes care of issues, you know, for for uh, you know a minute or Specific two. Big matchups. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's a, it's a good thing to have like in your sideboard like toolbox when you're normally getting something like pest summoning or necrotic fumes as your lesson. If you ever need it you can just grab your academic probation as well. So I'm not sure how often it comes in, but that is the only other splash of white we have besides the Extus Overlord. And don't forget about the backside of that, the Awaken the Blood Avatar. That's pretty scary too. <laughs> oh, yes. But on right, the other side, look. we'll be looking at L and we are back with some more Lurus Rogues because I know y'all didn't get enough Rogues yet tonight. So... <laughs> <laughs> well it is number one in the meta right here uh in the bml so no yeah. surprise no not at all um and we are looking at uh some some cards to watch here there is only one cling to dust in this list so that's a little scary there is one baleful mastery which also exiles uh creatures so we have that but mm -hmm. no real other way of dealing with the cards that L will be trying to put in to uh, uh, Bronca's graveyard. So <laughs> L, L might be doing some of Bronca's dirty work here by filling up the graveyard for both Extus and Croxa. Um, so it, with Extus being able to return cards to hand and with Croxa escaping the more cards that hit the graveyard. So it's definitely a, it's definitely a very delicate dance she needs to do here tonight so definitely a scary uh a, a scary matchup from from either side honestly uh um, yeah l saying that they were expecting sultai ultimatum this week so decided to give rogues a shot to try to get the edge but unfortunately her opponent decided to bring this mardu sacrifice deck which may be a bit scarier, which I can totally understand. That's one of the cool things about the VML, though, because you're not locked into one deck. We uh, there are, there is deck submission every week, so brand new decks, keeping up with the formats, you know, change in pace every week. So it's 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 a pretty pretty awesome uh, uh, league that we have going on here. A lot of fun, absolutely. A lot yeah. of fun to follow. A lot to keep up with. And I am ready to get right into the action here. Final match of the evening. We've got Mardu Sacrifice versus Loris Rogues. We'll be watching from the side of the Mardu Sacrifice deck. We'll see. That. All right, so opening hand, we're looking for maybe some cheap spells like Eye Twitch, Scorpion, things like that, maybe a Croxa. Uh, the Bastion actually only costs three, so even that would be great. Oh, this looks yeah. this looks pretty good. <laughs> yeah, this, this looks great. Exactly what you were talking about. And honestly, from Bronca's side, I'm almost just like, I wonder what Elle's going to put in my graveyard for me. You know, like, <laughs> like mm -hmm. how quickly are they going to put, you know, when am I going to see my first Croxa sort of thing? So we'll see. But um, the Rogues is on the play here. So we'll see L is on the play. A Swamp and just the pass of the turn. Village writes the draw on Bronca's side. So they'll just play a Triome and pass the turn back. Thieves Guild Enforcer will be the first on the battlefield. And we'll start milling some cards. We Ooh. see one of the Predators hit the graveyard there. That is, there's only one left in the deck. Yes. Um Exus, however, is able to return that because it is non-legendary. So if very true, and if an Exus hits the battlefield and is able to do that, or um, if it lives long enough to do that, if it 
resolves and everything like that. Merfolk Wind Robber will be the play now from L's side. Drawing a land for turn. Not the most exciting, but Forbidden Friendship here. Is the dino going to get in the red zone? Dino is attacking. Got some tasty hasty there, and we're going to see. Yeah, might as well. well. Right? Why not? If they block, that's great. Because Werfolk, when Robert represents a card draw later in the game to replace itself, if it ever gets outclassed or needs to block. Uh, so L saying, you know what, I'll just take that one damage right now, uh, you know, go to mm -hmm. 19. It's so early in the game. Um, yeah. And being willing to pass. We know I really doing. hope that Bronca is able to cast that Bastion. Bastion. Um, oh, and tapping out. Oh, no, no, no. There's still blue mana up. So, <laughs> oh, Croxa. There is Croxa. So Croxa is looming because there's already enough cards in the bin to escape it, I believe. So it's just a matter of having enough lands to be able to cast it as well. Uh Gonna try to throw it down. Um, could get countered. Probably will get countered. Well, L knows that there's a Croxa coming as well. So True. L needs to be careful with their counter spells. It depends on with only three cards in hand. But Bastion is very scary and it is in itself a clock. It makes another body it's... on the battlefield. It gains yeah. life. Yeah, just like once it's there... I don't think that there's that L has much to deal with it. You know, no, I, I agree. I, I don't know that there is. So actually it's tough. Way. I agree. I think there is no ways for them to be able to remove a bastion once it is in play. No, there is not nothing in the main deck. Actually, nothing in the sideboard either to be able to remove a resolved bastion of remembrance, which is kind of scary. So, but Bronca at 14 life. So, uh, L is chipping away at the life total. And milling a, a lot. second Croxa. All right. Definitely enough in the graveyard to attempt the Croxa. Oh, yes. Plenty to uh, go you, here. Yeah, you want to be careful not to get rid of your creatures there but she was she was careful yes all right didn't say please milling <laughs> hitting the woe strider and a, was that oh, the, another croxa no that was the croxa that was, it was the same just, oh yeah, back, okay okay back <laughs> into the right that would be I was just like, like wait <laughs> So many crocs. I feel like there's, it hits a point where it's just like, all right, I've had enough. I'd like to actually like maybe even draw one just to like cast it as like a discard you yeah, know, spell. Exactly. So, um, <laughs> but L still at 19 life, Bronca at 14. Some cards there waiting in the gra in the graveyard to the village to rights is them. looking good. Yes. Serrated Scorpion. And so much mill. Village rights, claim a firstborn, and a land milled with that land off the ruin crab. There definitely is a fear of being milled out from you know Bronca's side. Like as much as Bronca wants cards in the graveyard, uh Bronca does not want all of her cards in the graveyard. So at some point, Bronca's gotta put some pressure on and and make sure that that you know, she can close this game out. Yeah, I mean, I I don't know what Bronca would have to deal with all of these rogues. Like, I'm not seeing any removal, really. No, uh, Bronca doesn't really play much removal outside of, like, being able to the, claim the firstborn. Oh, well, yeah, exactly. Rights, or, yeah. Which, like, <laughs> a lot of those are in the graveyard. Yes, or uh, being able to learn off of an eye twitch and... Uh, get something Grabbing like something necrotic, like fruit necrotic fumes. fumes. Yes, but gotcha. Oh, or the uh, start from scratch. But I mean, it's just tough if you can't remove this rune crab in these these mill rogues. It just hurts. It hurts. So it Fast. Heartless act on Croxa. 
village rights in response. Drawing some cards, gaining a life. Yep, it looks like we'll drain. So L will drop down to 15 and Bronca up to 14. That's a good card. Excess is a, definitely a good card. And L with only Loris and one other card in hand at the moment. So, you know, the shields aren't down here, but it, it's getting slightly precarious running out of cards. But again, with a, a, a better board presence, mostly at the moment and being able to keep poking in with this wind robber, bringing Bronco down to 13 and milling just a little bit more. We'll see the, uh, hunt for specimens hit the battle uh, hit the graveyard there yeah so l only has one card in hand and it definitely could be a uh counter yes now i wonder um if bronca plans on holding the uh exodus to be able to cast the awaken the blood avatar which is the backside the six uh red black in addition to cast a spell, you can sacrifice any number of creatures. Oh, it, it, so it, it makes it, it cost costs less. Two, yes, it makes it cost two less for each creature sacrificed that way. And oh, and they opponent, have to sacrifice. Yep, each opponent sacrifices a creature, and they make a 3-6 black and red avatar with haste. And it's whenever this creature attacks, it deals three damage to every opponent. So, I mean, that's a, that's a good card. Yes. So it's definitely a lot of words, but shield's totally down for L here. Uh, L is out of cards. So <laughs> what mm -hmm. you see is what you got on the rogue side here. Debating playing that claim uh, yeah. on Luris here. I, I like the play, especially uh, with the Plum the Forbidden to be able to uh, sacrifice or uh, awaken works too. <laughs> oh, this is really nice, actually. Yes. So this is wow. a super cheap. Um, Sacrificing, getting all that value from the Bastion triggers. And then L has to make the tough decision, probably just sacrificing the Wind Robber. We'll see, because I feel like the other... No, it looks like Ruin oh. Crown. Ne needs a... I think L needs a card draw more, probably. Yes. And the three six wow. we'll get in which automatically deals the three. Uh so L dropping down to nine, needing to jump in front of that three six avatar and trade with the Thieves Guild Enforcer that had death touch. So now we have a one one to a one one. But Bronca's got three cards in hand, four cards to escape. And uh, L has just the Merfolk Wind Robber. Of one mind, not a bad draw. Drawing two fresh cards, only two mana up at the moment, though. So this is a pretty precarious uh, place for our Rogues player here. Yeah, it's like the mill helped. <laughs> <laughs> it definitely did. Like this, what I said, it's a very delicate. There's definitely a very thin line between. I want to mill out my opponent and I'm yeah. giving them all of their graveyard synergies right now. Mm -hmm. So so L only has two cards in hand. Um, this is a tough spot. The next play for Bronca, I would imagine, um, I mean, there's just so much value over here. Probably just doing Croxa and let's see, making sure you're not exiling the wrong thing there. Yes. Although Very important. Bronco's graveyard pr pretty flush with uh, resources here, so even a even a even a, a misclick to exile yeah. one of your riders probably wouldn't be the end of the world. It may end up mattering, but as of right now, it doesn't look like it does. L still considering putting pressure on uh, having to discard a card, and I think Bronca has enough mana to maybe cast down the Forbidden Friendship. I'm not too sure. I think that she might have two mana. 
Um, so that would be attacking for two. Yeah, and but for also will resolve. We'll see what the discard is here because being at seven, discarding a a land card. No, it looks like soaring thought thief thought will hit thief. the bin here. So uh L will stay at seven until the attack step, of course, where <laughs> now we're going to look at two one ones getting in. So L will drop down to five. Bronca's still at a healthy 16 life. Oh, wait, no, we've got another Soaring Thought Thief here. Got to jump in front of that dino. So still we'll drop down to five. Bronco will move up to 17 life. But see, this is this is where it gets scary because you almost need to block and try to not kill all of their things because everything that dies, you still lose a life. And they have three creatures mm -hmm. out there. So the 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 clock is is truly ticking right now. Definitely a very... They're very uh, scary position for the rogues player at the moment. I'm not sure how they will be able to manage getting out of this one. Agreed. Looks like a stare down between Soaring Thought Thief and Croxa right now. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Ooh. We, I mean... There's options here on Bronca's side. Going to attack oh. first? Oh. No, it looks like Drown of the Lock is going to try to take care of that Croxa. Leaving just the two 1-1s one -ones here. I'm going to get in for one. Now, if Bronca had played out the Bastion, would that have made a big impact before attacking there? I do believe a Bastion with a Plum the Forbidden okay. would have been very close to lethal, if not because I believe the Drown on the Lock probably would have taken care of the Croxa before the second Bastion could hit. But that would have oh, made... they can. Oh, I see. They can still trigger that anyways. Yes. Perfect. With but the Low Strider. Always have nice. a backup plan. Nice. And it looks like right. Ronda's backup, backup plan worked. And as we move to sideboards here for game number two. So, all right, X that is gonna so gonna go by Exodus. <laughs> too, <laughs> it's a great card, too expensive. Even with the Awaken of the Blood Avatar, uh, being able to sacrifice the creatures and reducing costs, but I know. can go blank, which is a discard spell and exiles the opponent's graveyard. Yes. So. This target player discards two cards, exiling all cards from their opponent. All right. Looks like we are ready for game number two here. Between L and Bronca, who both say they are Witherbloom. But have Quandrix oh. and Silver Quill uh, avatars here. <laughs> <laughs> I like the Wither Bloom avatar. Oh yeah, it's a, a Dina. Dina, mm -hmm. right? Yeah, I see a lot of people using it. It's, it's just it's, this, it's just so colorful and takes up like the whole screen. That's what, it's I huge. love it. And it's it is, huge. She's like she's radiant or something I, like she's, uh, she's, yeah. <laughs> I had it for a day, and then I was like, this just doesn't feel right. I have to have Liliana back. <laughs> <laughs> I'll say, I'm, I, I have Karn, so oh, I just always nice. have Karn. I'm a Tron player anyway. Oh, I and, love um, Tron. Oh, I, it's my it's my favorite. Uh, we recently got a puppy in November, and his, <gasps> his name is Karn Liberated Davis. And oh, love that. <laughs> my, my son named him. He was like, oh, his middle name can be liberated. I said, whatever you want. So he goes, because he doesn't have pants. I was like, that's very oh, true. Karn nice. Does not, Karn does not wear pants. The dog. I guess the golem too, but you know. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> oh, my God. So we are ready here for game number two. We are. Are heading in and an interesting. It's a lot of lands. 
That's a lot of lands. Kazul's Fury is sort of a land but in itself, too. Kazul's Fury, you could pitch your lands. I don't know. It's a little, I, I, it's a little scary. I think I would mull, but... Um, Honestly, I hate mulliganing, so I'd probably just. Keep I do it. too. I also don't I know do what I'm too. doing. So <laughs> no, our, our, oh, uh, oh, no lands. The, see, you know, it's that shuffler. That's what happens every time. <laughs> yeah, I, I hate mulliganing as well because this always happens to me. Yeah. Give me um, back my seven. But I'm there's no option. We have to mulligan again here and just hope for a good mix of cards. Again, you know. Bronca holding out hope that Elle does some of the dirty work for her and fills up her graveyard with useful Very true. cards like Croxa and things like that. So mm -hmm. not too much, but just enough. <laughs> Seems like Elle's having a tough decision over there as well. Yes. I mean, big game being on the play, you know, against a deck that, that, um, Probably feels like not a great matchup. So, big decision here. Let's see. She does decide to mulligan. Oh, opponent has taken two mulligans now. So, we've got both both oh, players wow. on five cards. Um, and this isn't much better. It's, oh, this is okay. I mean, you are on the draw. One land is always scary, but it's like, can you go... You can play the eye twitch, or... and then if, if you hit the land, you do have the forbidden uh, friendship, so I think you would keep at this point just because, like, I wouldn't want to have to go down any more cards. So this is it's pretty good. Hopefully uh, Bronca hits that land. Oof. Yeah. We see uh, Bronca playing a tap land. I suppose the second best thing but besides hitting your second land is to hit another one drop. Yeah. Maybe. <laughs> <But> <laughs> we see L coming Ooh, out of the wow. gate, but you know, not missing a land drop themselves and two threats to follow up. See some lands hitting the graveyard for Bronca. Uh, Cause those Fury is a land. So we'll come in tapped, but mm -hmm. take what you can get sometimes. That exactly. Double soaring wow. quad thief. So a pretty good mulligan from L's side, if I do say so, as this attack mm. for eight comes across. Wow, that was fast. Yes. And no blocks. I twitch gonna hang on. No land. Yikes. Unfortunately, only one black source on Bronca's side. So um unable to both cast that eye twitch and the uh the village rights but going to just village rights the eye twitch anyway hoping wow. to find no land, no land. oh no so that's a quick oh. that was a quick one uh they were dead on the backswing uh there was 11 power in the air. Oh, sorry 11 power on the board on L side the 5 to uh the thieves guild enforcer and the two soaring thought thieves for three power a piece so definitely showing of of how powerful a rogue deck can be so yes even going then, down to that many cards yes, just I, took over fast i mean going unchecked and that is one of the things about you know um l doesn't have to worry about uh counter spells from bronca's side so We'll see if L is deciding to change up some some of their sideboard strategies for game number three. We have got. I'm excited to see game number three. I'm very excited. I, I mean, can answer more this is this is the perfect way to end the night with the <laughs> final match. Is a like game three like this? Yes. Um. So, hopefully, mm -hmm. no blowouts and each each opponent gets good amounts of mana and the shuffler is kind and we can just all think positive right um, a nice or a full, great game even <laughs> game of magic i'm sure <laughs> we've seen both players do an exceptional job so far so i expect nothing less than our game three bronca two and one on the season this season and l at one and two bronca also a member of team bandit gang so 
it's pretty cool the, the the mix of magic players that we get every season in the the vml it, it's pretty awesome what is know? that team band-aid oh, game i actually i'm not i'm not overly oh. familiar with them they're just like an esports team uh, oh cool from, okay yeah so there's uh we have qu- quite a few of our, our competitors are part of like various esports uh esports teams and and things all, all over the world Super cool. honestly yeah oh, that's it's, amazing it's pretty awesome so a much better opening hand for bronca being able to get down that eye twitch or the scorpion is there is there a reason for one over the other first or um, they're kind of the same i would say they're kind of the same the eye twitch the only reason i would i would think the serrated scorpion could be blocked easier by something like a a, a ruin crab but the eye twitch also learns and you might not know what True. you want to get from your learn board until later like there might be something that you want that you can't get or or so, you, you don't That's know that point. you need yet so so I, having not really played the deck i could see like i I trust bronca going scorpion first and then i twitch Mm -hmm. i'm totally good with that we'll see soaring all right so maybe see a village rights here or no just just just, it's just dying i wonder oh see and we'll see oh see and now this is the 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 decision here We're, we're checking out what do we got looks like deciding to loot away actually the uh, Immersion Predator instead of oh. grabbing something from Learn for it. Yes. Wow, what a great line of play. Yes. Took the Thought Thief and then just sacrificed it with the village rights. That was much better than what I was thinking. Yes. <laughs> Sometimes, like, you know, that they, is fantastic. obviously, you want people seeing the streamline of I want to steal their thing, attack with it, get my damage in and then sacrifice it. But right. Bronco's seeing that value of being like, L is tapped out right now. And they mm-hmm. won't be able to stop me from doing this. So Perfect, stealing, yeah. even though not being able to like get that extra one damage that they would have gotten with the Soaring Thought Thief, but taking that thread off the board and being able to draw two cards off of it feels pretty good, even though it was, you know, it cost two of Bronco's cards. It, it, it sets L's board state back quite a bit. Yes. And fills the hand a little bit, so. Yes, definitely does that. And that's... One of the things about uh, that makes this matchup, I think, more difficult here is we see a for, uh, forbidden friendship on the stack. And Elle is thinking about what to do here because do you really want to counter a forbidden friendship? It's a two-mana Not spell really. and it feels really bad. <laughs> but a lot yeah. of the cards in Bronca's deck Synergy are just, Yeah, it's just... With like, that... Yeah. The, yeah with having those mana. tokens. It's mm-hmm. just like... Yeah, exactly. It's like, but you can't let Bronca build that board presence and get that synergy going with Claim the Firstborns and Village Rights and, you know, Plum the Forbiddens and, and all these other cards, like, and Bastion of Remembrance. And, and the longer you let Bronca, okay, I'll let that one mana spell resolve. I'll let this two mana spell resolve. It, it, all of a sudden you turn around, Bronca's just got like an army of one ones and a Bastion of Remembrance and you can't do anything about it. Exactly. And you, you just die. So, yeah, I, no, I actually really like the counter. Yes. on that you have to keep it in check for sure yeah. uh into the story yes a timely duress from bronca's side there into the story before it could be added to discounted rate and uh l unable to stop it as um l does reveal um the baleful mastery uh that we were talking about uh that they have main and a couple of lands and soaring thought they're gonna hit the battlefield here Bronca has claim. Mm-hmm. And another village, right? So mm-hmm. Bronca also having most of the knowledge of, of what L has in hand might feel comfortable enough just kind of firing that off next turn. But we will see. Um, What's the biggest threat here, though? I mean, do you wait to claim something like Luris or I don't know. Um, I think the Do you, like, idea, hold it back or just I I can see that like and not having too many removal spells for Luris, but at the same time, mm-hmm. like and now that especially Bronca hit a, a Croxa, so they have plenty to do, they can outclass Luris. But 
claiming and being able to draw two cards off of village rights just feels really good. It's not even like claiming and being able to kill a thing. Mm -hmm. It's claiming and making sure that you're keeping your own resources replenished. You know, exactly. So being able to claim that soaring thought thief, you know, being able to uh, attack with it, get it, get a, get your, you know, two damage in or one damage in or whatever, and then being able to draw two cards off of it. It, it that's I think that's where Bronco wants to be. Um, even though, yeah, so Loris is definitely much more valuable, but you can see L's not even adding Loris to hand yet. Yeah, so. exactly. Oh, we'll see. Thought about clicking the uh, the creatures there. It was deciding what to do. Ended up leaving the creatures in in the bin. Croxa does resolve. Let's see what L decides to discard here. And that oh. Baleful Mastery will be met with a Village Rites. So the Baleful Mastery will fizzle. Not that it made too much of a difference. L will be able to get in for one with the Serrated Scorpion. Bringing, uh, sorry, Bronca gets in one with the serrated scorpion, bringing L down to 12. Bronca at 18 alive still. Now uh, L is adding Luris to hand. Yeah, Luris is scary. Um, <laughs> I'm like wondering how Bronca deals with this Luris. There's no well, sacrifice triggers right now or, or no way to sacrifice. Oh, the plum, the forbidden right. in hand might come into play. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. So. That is a sacrifice. Just <laughs> kidding. Okay, so then uh, Bronca is sitting in a good spot, actually. Yeah, Bronca seems to still have this game. It can definitely there 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 are ways that rogues can still come back here. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, just to be able to draw. Like I said, L doesn't have to worry about counter spells from Bronca. So if L has you know a, a couple of draw spells, you know we saw how just one thieves guild enforcer and double soaring thought thief just took out game two in right you know four turns so you know it, it's definitely a, a, a scary position kazul's fury is interesting yeah. doing some math here yeah i mean you would get so much value off of uh that plum eventually it's gonna be nice Yes. And when Serrated Scorpion dies, that's you can count on another uh two damage triggers. From that. Mm -hmm. yes. So there's so you learn, you get damage, you can steal something, sacrifice something of theirs. That's like huge. Yes. And just cheap spells too. This is great. But L knows this. Clearly, because <laughs> L is not dropping down that Luris. Yes, yeah, so going to go ahead and get the value off of that. Uh, drawing cards, learn two damage. Another plum the forbidden. Uh, another Ooh, Croxa. Croxa. <laughs> wow. And being able what to Croxa and then escape Croxa. Um. That will be able to get the last two cards out of L's hand. Or at least get the Luris out of L's hand. We're not sure what that second card is. Uh, if if mm -hmm. L can play it at instant speed or not. Uh, Pest Summoning looks like the choice for Bronca here. Had thought about the Necrotic Fumes for the Exile effect. But looks like it will just be Pest Summoning. Thinking about so which box to start here. with, right? <laughs> yeah. Do I start with the one in the in the graveyard, or do I start the one in my hand? I like starting with the one in the graveyard because it's the one that L knows about. So we'll see that hit real quick. And what will the response be here? Discarding a land. a land. So taking three off of that, but Bronca knows that that wow. means just Doris is left. So. That's one way to take care of Luris, that's for sure. That is great. A claim the firstborn to give Croxa haste. Haste. Forcing the block here Putting, with Soaring Thought Thief. Wow. That is amazing. 
<laughs> yeah, that was that was certainly a play. And now we know that if L allows Bronca to untap, oh. they are dead to the Castle's fury. And cycling a triome is not a good sign. A uh, crippling Ooh. fear will give Crocs a minus three, minus three to everything except an antelope. I like the name there, L. Uh, antelope is a, a good name. <laughs> so, well, play it on both sides, but after three games. We will see Bronca take that match down two games to one. GG's both sides, L and Bronca both played excellent tonight, as did the rest of our players that we featured here tonight on the VML. Again, if you aren't following us, make sure you follow us here at Aspirant CCG here on Twitch. Make sure you're following us on Twitter, VML MTG. Uh, you can also give me a follow. I'm Lady of the Crease on, on Twitter. And uh, if you'd like to plug, all of your things, Talia. I would. I'm Talia Vess, pretty much everywhere. Pretty much. So you can follow me there. Twitch, <laughs> Twitter, Instagram, I have it all. All that, all that good stuff. TikTok. And a big... <laughs> really? <laughs> I I have a TikTok, but like, I'm such a boomer. Like, I just I'm not a boomer. I'm a millennial, but like, I'm an old millennial. So I I don't really understand what's happening. Like, I try to figure it out, but it's it's very like complicated Listen, so so i'm working on we, that working on that about, we talked about <laughs> crab rave and tiktok tonight. We're, <laughs> we're both really hip all right we're, we're cool <laughs> <laughs> so cool <laughs> but oh. really a big thank you again to the energy series for making the season possible huge ups to wizards for their uh prize support for the invite uh and a thank you to channel fireball for the cfd pro also a huge thank you to our producer this evening uh brasky we'd like to give you a, a big shout out brasky stepping up our normal producer phoebe uh had to be out for the week so Hope Phoebe is doing well, but Brasky, thank you so much for your time. Thank you to our whole admin team, uh, our caster team, our players, and most of all, our viewers. So our thank viewers. you all for all the love, all the support. We appreciate each and every one of you, and we will catch you same time next week, Friday, 9 p.m. Eastern, 6 p.m. Pacific, right here on Aspirin CCG with week number five of some VML MTG action. Make sure you be there. All right? Good night. Good night. <laughs>